Dan Candell here, the Anxiety Relief Guy, creator of the Anxiety Relief Revolution. Today, we're going to be talking all about failure. I got a text message the other day and it said, because uh, I signed up for like some of these motivational text messages and one of them that I got said, hey Dan, you're a failure. And I'm like, what? I was like kind of triggered by this. I'm like, that's kind of a douchey thing to say. <laughs> and then I read into it more and it said how you should celebrate your failures. Now, we often hear this. We hear we should celebrate our failures or there's no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. We often hear this, but telling ourselves that is much like our parents telling us we should eat our vegetables when we're younger, right? It's like not gonna happen and we don't want to. It. it doesn't make us like it or enjoy it anymore. So I wanted to talk a little bit about failure today. One of the most common fears amongst business owners and entrepreneurs are failing in business, are not making enough money, not being able to provide enough for their family or for themselves. Uh, a very common fear amongst parents are having children who are not happy or who are failures or uh, parents who feel like they're not doing their job as a parent, so failing as a parent. So this thing of the, this, this uh, thread of failure, it's a very common fear amongst many groups of people. And it really keeps us from performing our best. So here are four ways to really knock that failure complex, to really embrace failure and make it your B-I-T-C-H, all right? Make it work for you instead of against you. So that if you get that text message that says, hey, you're such a failure, maybe you won't react or respond to it at first as I did. So here are four things you can do in the face of failure. Number one is realize everyone fails and realize everyone has failed before. Even those people who you see on social media who look like they are perfect, guess what? They have failed. In fact, they have probably failed a lot more than some of us have failed. They're taking more chances. They're taking more risk. And yes, sometimes they confront more failure. One of the good things to do to really embrace it and to realize that everyone fails is to study some important cases where celebrities or even famous failures that have happened. So for example, uh, Einstein failed several times. Uh, Henry Ford failed several times. Mike the Situation from the Jersey Shore failed several times and then he turned his life around. I mean, he got eight months in prison, but then he turned his life around. So study some famous failures to remind yourself you're not alone. And these people turned failure into something that worked for them. They made failure their be with an itch. I can't say it on social media because I don't want to get flagged for being inappropriate. Uh, number two, make a learned list. Whenever you fail, write down a list of what you've learned or what you're going to do differently or what you're going to do better or make a list of things you can become aware of to prevent in the future. Number three, instead of giving up, acknowledge, just acknowledge, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Sometimes when we fail, we really want to give up and we're like, I'm such a failure. I can't believe I made this mistake. And we really are our own worst critic. We get down on ourselves by changing our language. Instead of saying, I'm a failure, I give up. I'm never going to do this again. Instead of doing that, instead of going into that state of mind, rewind it back. And instead, just acknowledge and admit to yourself, well, that didn't work. And then ask yourself this question, what can I do to make this better? Or what can I do to make this work better? What can I do differently? When you ask yourself that question, you go into more solution state of mind. So it's all about creating this new neural pathway of looking for solutions instead of constantly seeing those failures. That's number three. Number four is this, let yourself get upset. When you fail, let yourself get upset. You know, let yourself get a little aggravated or pissed off. 
but instead of letting it take over, put a time limit on it and say, okay, I'm gonna ruminate on this or, or I'm gonna just kind of go on this tangent and let myself get upset for five minutes or 10 minutes, or maybe it's like a half an hour, or maybe depending on how big that failure was, maybe you need like a day and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna take the next day as a mental health day. I'm gonna go see a movie. I'm gonna go get a massage. So that way I can feel better about getting into more of a solution focused state. Let yourself get upset, but put a time limit on it. I can't tell you how many people just say, oh, you know, I can't, I can't worry about that. I can't worry about that. But there's that little piece of their mind that's like baloney. You have to worry about this. You, you have to think about this. If you do have a failure and you just literally do that and you just brush it off, more often than not, you're going to repeat that same failure. You're going to repeat that same mistake. So by going through these four steps, realizing everybody makes mistakes, embrace it and study some key cases, some famous failures, so you can kind of follow their path of how they've recovered from it or how they've bounced back from it. Number two, make a learned list. Figure out what you've learned. Number three, instead of giving up, acknowledge it. Say, that didn't work out. What can I do better the next time? And number four, allow yourself to get upset about it, but put a time limit on it and then move forward from that and start implementing more of those solutions. So there's some failure feedback for you. I hope this was entirely wonderfully uh, important and useful to you. I know these videos are really useful for me to shoot them because it causes me to go and research different topics uh, so that way I know a lot about them so I can help you through them. And by the way, these are all solutions I've implemented for myself in my clients in the past. <clears throat> If you'd like to join the anxiety relief revolution, it's not just about overcoming certain anxieties like performance anxiety, social anxiety. It's also about breaking into a high state performance, into a high, uh, a high performance state. So that way you can start feeling more confident, more focused, more motivated, more optimistic, really boosting your mindset to boost your productivity, to start taking more chances. And as Miss Rizzle said, Get messy, make mistakes, and take chances. So you can do more of that. It is important that you fine tune your mind. So if you'd like to enjoy, or excuse me, if you'd like to join the Anxiety Relief Revolution group where we overcome anxiety and also we carve that new neural pathway of high performance, of productivity, and of really being your very best self, I want you to let me know because I'm going to be conducting a six week group online that is all about interrupting negative emotions, stopping negative anxiety, stress, tension, worry, doubt, and fear in its tracks and rewiring that, having a mental way to rewire those abilities so that you can become more able and become the best version of you. I know this video was probably a minute or so too long. I usually try and keep them around five minutes. We're actually at eight minutes now. I know it was a little long, but hey, I hope it was valuable for you. And if you'd like to inquire about joining one of those groups to achieve the best version of you, please feel free to leave a comment, message me, or you can even go to anxietyreliefguy.com. I'm Dan Kandel, the Anxiety Relief Guy, creator of the Anxiety Relief Revolution. As always, be well, do good, be true to who you are. Talk to you all soon.